I have a blog post which says, boring in pursuit of fulfillment, right? Mm. It, because it, it essentially boring, and, and, and that's the thing, it takes us to Brian Tracy's, uh, it's, like I have a lot of influences, like Brian Tracy's Eat the Frog, right? It says, find the biggest, ugliest frog and swallow it that morning. Which means do the most boring, the most mundane, but most impactful task of that day. Which leads into the one thing that, what is the one thing that you can do now that makes everything irrelevant? That mm -hmm. one thing, once you do it, everything else is irrelevant. Then you reprioritize, which then leads you into James Clear's Atomic Habits, which says build habits, but it says the way to ensure that these habits get done is to layer them. Like one habit leads to another, and so so that they are self-reinforcing, which essentially takes us back is that boring, I mean, it's like wealth. I think it's like the wealth of all riches uh, discussion. Somebody's driving a Range Rover, oh, that person is rich. Yes, but the wealthy people do not have to be driving a Range Rover. They may have the, cap they may say, this is where I'm going to put my time and effort in building generational wealth. And that generation, generational wealth involves investing in your children, getting in them the best, like trying to figure out this safety net that people will only see when they are 40 or 50. And they say, oh, by the way, my dad, like, I, I mean, my great, my grand, my maternal grandfather was a reverend canon. And everything we do in respect to church and things like that, or in the area he grew up in, we invoke his name. He passed over 30 years, 20 years ago. But imagine the impact he left whereby his name can still open doors for his children. Like, mm -hmm. that is amazing. That's what we want to be. And, you know, he's, it is that, it's like the footprints you live in the, in the journey through life are that. You know, those are the things I'm, I mean, those are the things I'm thinking about. Those are the things I, I say, how else can I give back in within my own rules, in within my own circumstances, first to my children, that's my first one, then to the larger community, then through different people wherever I can, so that I can maximize my impact, so that they don't have to even build upon it, but it's just me putting good out in the world, so that others can grow and benefit from it. So it is essentially looking at it, it's, it's it, across all those things is that, what are the fundamentals, you know, am I a stoic, am I a what? You know, if you read all those things, just saying, be a good person, be a person of principle. Now, obviously principle means, principles are unchangeable, even if on, in two different circumstances, the same principle can give you different results or different answers. So principles don't mean that I die on a hill if the hill changes and is no longer viable, we move to another hill, but the principle should remain, they should be unchanging and unfathom and, and you know, unchanging over time. And that, like I tell people, like one of my core principles, which I strive to be is excellence and mastery. Those two are in, those two are in, they're at loggerheads because mastery means I get very good at something. Excellence means I try to do the best I can. But that doesn't mean and quality. So I want very high quality work. But there are times when somebody says, I'm not willing to wait for that quality. I want a result today. Which means I should be able to deliver for today because by the time I can't, then my mastery of my skills doesn't come out and my drive to excellence doesn't. Excellence is solving that person's problem today and when they need it. Because that's the definition of quality to a customer is if I want... If I'm hungry and I need something to drink, you can't tell me wait for an hour for me to give you that perfectly brewed cup of tea. Give me, yeah. give me warm tea. I, I am thirsty now. You know, so I think it's that balance between all of them and trying to make a pragmatic and rational decision on you know, what, the, what those heels and those principles mean. Obviously, we don't know what they are and we think we know what they are, but as you keep testing them, they also evolve and say, okay, this one is, uh, some of them are vague, but you should be able to explain to them. And over time, we articulate them better or worse.